Yo, let's go, baby. Champs day one is in the books. And today we are breaking down all the matches of day one and talking about some of the biggest storylines heading into day two and the teams, of course, who got eliminated. So we have a lot to get into today. So without further ado, let's get right into this one. Let's freaking go. All right. So off the rip, Dallas, we got to talk about the first match of the day, Dallas versus Rocker and the insanity that went down in day one. So obviously this video is gonna be like, like no cuts. I hope no cuts at least because we're going to be talking through it all and going through basically all the matches and everything that happened. Of course, Dallas came out and fried one, three, two against the rocker and map one Shotzi came out and was making a statement like, yo, don't forget about me. I'm insane. And Shotzi looked like he was dialed in. He was cracked and they just played great. I mean, they're really their second rotation and their P4 was the difference in that in that map. And of course, we talked a lot about the Rocker coming into this tournament and how we we thought that Dallas might come out here with like two weeks of preparation and in, heading into this series with uh, I thought they were going to look really good. And that is exactly what happened. Dallas came out and looked incredible, like legitimately insane. And that P4 was just absolutely the difference in that first Moscow hard point. And I mean, Shotzi went 25 and 10. They didn't even use their streaks on the P4. Normally you'd see them use the streaks there, but they didn't even feel like they needed to use them. And they came out and looked really great. Map one, map two, they play on what? Raid and they they beat the Rocker 6-1. And the off angles and using the ARs to find the first bloods on that raid were insanely impressive from Dallas. I, I thought that was probably the most impressive thing with Illy and Krim finding those first bloods with the ARs. And just overall, they really just did a good job of capitalizing on those first blood opportunities that they were getting. And it didn't seem like Rocker had very many answers. And then you head into a control on raid as well. And Illy was just going off and playing, playing huge, making tons of clutches. And overall, you got to be freaking impressed with, with Dallas and the performances that they put on against the Rocker here in that first series. And with them heading out into, the, in, into their match tomorrow against Toronto, I mean, Dallas has unlimited potential in champs here. They could easily make a run here to win, but uh, I mean, Toronto's as good as it gets. So it's gonna be an insanely great series. I cannot wait for it to say the least. And as for the Rocker, obviously it was a really disappointing series. I mean, I, I'm, I was a little bit, I mean, more than a little bit, very worried about their hard points coming off of that, that series against Dallas and then heading into their loser's bracket match against LA Thieves. And there was just some big time mistakes and the P4s were just totally, to like the P4s on Moscow, I, I just felt like they were really non-coordinated and the ARs just weren't doing a good job of maximizing their positioning and we're getting gunned. And that's a big time problem. And, and with Shotzi ro roaming how he was roaming, I was like, man, this could be a problem for, for Rocker heading into this next series. And just overall, the lack of positioning uh, the, the poor positioning and lack of trades in the S and D on raid two, where normally they're so consistent and they just weren't capitalizing at all, even when they had some good opportunities. And so that was issue, uh, like, that's a big red flag. And then you head into the control and overall just felt like Dallas was insanely prepared and just had rockers number that whole series, making play or making reads and kind of calling their pushes and waiting on those pushes back kitchen or, or making their, or calling the, the push front. Overall, just making better reads and Dallas was seemed like they were completely outmatched. And then you head into the LA Thieves series for Rocker. And then, I mean, you if you're Rocker, I'm like, they're playing, they're playing LA Thieves on Checkmate. I mean, Checkmate's the one match where we know LA Thieves can play well. I mean, that's a guarantee. And Shocker, you know, LAT comes out and wins the Checkmate. And you're like, oh no, man, it's, it's is Rocker going to come out here and really drop the egg again in a second series? Drop the bag? And that's where I was scared. I was like, oh, no, man, this is this is bad news. You know, and, and the irony of it is that LA Thieves has now won, like, I would have to say, like, five straight hard points, I think. I, have to, I think it's five straight now. Uh, and we're talking about LA Thieves in a second. But that, I was just really surprised they decided to square up against LAT on Checkmate overall. You had some big two breaks from Standy there, like, and gave him a decent chance to get back in that game. And overall, the SMGs had good maps, but the ARs were a little disconnected. And so you're still a little bit scared about L about Rocker's hard point heading into the rest of this weekend now, even though they end up beating the LA Thieves in the series. And the standoff SMG was juicy for sure. And I loved the plays from Rocker in that SMG on standoff to kind of get, to just make the comeback happen. And like, 
kind of get back in the series, get their get their footing right. And Priesto was making big time plays, and he was probably the story of that LAT series where, where we kind of saw a really great Priesta maps two through four, and he was, or two through five really, and he was the playmaker for Rocker. And they end up winning the series, of course, in, in a game five. So they won map two, they won the control on raid, and then they lose the hard point on Garrison. And you know, that's a map where you feel like Rocker should at least be pretty competitive with LA Thieves. And it was a pretty competitive map overall but the rotations just weren't very clean. And LAT just kept breaking their setups. And so the setups just were a little messy and Rock and Rocker just weren't holding hills. And that's gonna be a problem heading heading here into the, the rest of the weekend if that keeps keeps up how it is. So, uh, you know, that's why I'm still really hesitant about the Rocker and the potential for them on this tournament if their hard points keep looking like that. But then they go on to a Miami s &D, And again, Priesta is the playmaker. And Standy even, even struggles in this map. And, and he's not really finding the, the kills. He's getting first blooded a few times. And they still end up clutching. So that's a great sign for the Rocker. They had some nice strats on Miami. And I like it a lot. And so I, I would imagine a lot of teams are going to try to avoid playing Miami against them. But overall, you, you kind of walk away from this first day with the Rocker kind of a little hesitant. Like, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know how this is exactly could play out for them. And then, you know, as for LA Thieves, it just is unfortunate, man. You know, John really struggled in that series. And for a guy who's really probably fighting for his roster spot and potentially for a CDL spot next year, it sucks to see John have a tough series to end the year like that, where he was just really getting had in some of those. And so um, that's probably the biggest news of that, of that series for LA Thieves is kind of John's future in the CDL and what that could mean for him in roster mania. But again, the theme for them is that they win checkmate, but then they can't close out a series. They win both hard points, but they can't close out, you know, the S and D's or a control. And I was really impressed with Slasher. And yeah, so they had won five straight uh, checkmate, hard, checkmate hard points against Optic, Toronto, Subliners, Dallas, and Rocker now. So you don't play Dallas on, or you don't play LAT on checkmate. Don't do it. Luckily, no teams have to make that mistake anymore, but... Um, overall, impressed with Slasher, and Kenny made some huge plays as well. So, Draza wasn't as impressive as I would have liked to see him in a series like this, where he has some opportunities to be to be impressive, but um, just inconsistent. And there was, it just felt like they they definitely felt like a team that didn't have the preparation and teamwork to beat a team like the Rocker in the game in in S and D or in Control, and that kind of ended up being the difference. So, now heading on to the Optic series, Optic versus New York. I mean, shocker, man. New York shocks the world. And this is so on brand for Optic. NYSL beats Optic 3-2. And uh, they win map one, map two. And they they dominated the S and Ds, really. And Optic, you know, wins the checkmate, wins the apocalypse. And then subliners clutch up in a raid S and D, or more like Optic throws in a raid S and D. So the big takeaways for NYSL is that Clay, he's just really good, man. He's just really good. And Hydra, when he's playing his best COD, is as good as he gets in the CDL. The dude's a freak, and he's insane. And like Hydra's three piece on Express in round six was nuts. So he had some crazy plays on that checkmate in map one, the hard point. And uh, their control on checkmate looked iffy at best still with the with the offensive rounds, which was a little bit surprising. And the APOC was worryingly bad. They got 100 point clubbed, 250 to 96 on the, on the APOC. And that was a real problem. Both SMG struggled and it seemed like there was a lot of disconnects there. So I would imagine that's a map they might try to avoid moving forward. I don't know. So that's something to keep your eye on with the subliners here and when they play against FaZe and what that series could look like and whether or not they end up playing Apocalypse. I, Mac was the only one who didn't really shine. And so overall, you got to be pretty optimistic about this team. I'd be surprised if they beat FaZe, but you know, hey, I would have said I'd be surprised if they beat Optic. So, you know, here we are. And this is a team that could easily make a run to top four or top three in this tournament. They, they have the fundamentals. They have the communication. They're winning hard points against Optic. They, they win both SNDs against Optic. There's, there's is a foundation for success here and Subliners are a team you gotta be worried about moving forward for sure. So as for Optic, I mean, they dropped that that match against New York 
And even in that series, you you, you definitely took away that Skump is really freaking good. <laughs> Who'd have thought, you know? But classic optic that they lose on day one of a tournament, the first match of a tournament for them. That's like throwback to like old school optic and CWL tournaments losing early, like on the Friday losses or whatever early. But the S and D is what you really got to focus on here. That's the, the, they were, it was ugly. I mean, it was not pretty. And so that's where I get a little scared about optics, potential runs in this tournament. Of course they end up beating Florida in the losers bracket, but the S and D's are messy and they lost the S and D to Florida as well. And so now suddenly you're sitting here like, okay, yeah, they, they win a checkmate against, or they win a, an apocalypse against the sub islands, which was really impressive. And then they win an apocalypse against Florida. So that's a good sign for them. Maybe they have a map that they've been working on and, and feel like they're more comfortable on now. But the S and D's are a huge problem. We saw some major red flags in a lot of these rounds. They lost 6-1 against the subliners and the subliners completely outplayed them like with numbers, finding a first blood, playing numbers, rotating the bomb sides, giving up those first bloods. Uh, it was messy. It was really, really messy. And then you go to the, to the raid S and D and they just make some whack play calls and they waste some advantages. And this is really the only one play where Skump made a bad play was he, he child Mac when he was one kill off streaks, he was bottom mansion and they had a three V two or three V one, maybe a three V one. And he child Mac when he was bottom uh, mansion and he gave up his cruise missile basically with a 74 U versus a Krig gunfight that he probably didn't need to take. He could have just shouldered it, played for information, let his teammates trade out the kills, but he got a little bit greedy, chowed the gunfight, died off the cruise. And then they, and then obviously what everyone's gonna highlight was the, the round seven where Skump used his artillery. They had to bomb down on A. They, 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 use, they set up, basically used the artillery. But the problem is here is that they isolate Envoy. So Envoy is in an untradeable situation. Then they, then Formal and Skump isolate Dashy, and that means Dashy's in an untradeable situation. They used, they, they were planning on using the streak there, and I guess they were hoping that Envoy or Dashy could find one, but it puts you in a really tough spot though, because they end up using the streak. They end up losing the round because he gets the defuse in like 0.2 seconds. And that was a, that was a bad play. I mean, that was just overall tough. And they, there's a few moments there where they just, they let, their players get isolated. And like there was a moment where, where Envoy hit top laundry and Dashy just wasn't anywhere near for a trade. He was like back jungle and Envoy got overly aggressive to push top laundry in a place where Dashy couldn't trade the kill. And that was the big time issue for the round. So there's just those things that get me a little bit nervous. And then like on Moscow against Florida, like they, there was a round, I think it was round three. It really highlighted some of their bad S and D where they, they basically choked a 3v2, where Skump, Dashy, and Envoy were last alive. And Dashy gets isolated. He's all alone inside of gas station. But then instead of getting together in a 2v2, Envoy plays towards B-bomb, Skump plays towards A-bomb. Envoy goes down, they end up losing the round in the 2v1 for Skump. And like, you're just like, A, Envoy could have helped Dashy, B, then, then Dashy or Envoy and Skump could have got together even after Dashy died, played the 2v2 together. There's just these things where I just don't feel like they maximize their numbers well, and they rely on the the the, the 1v1 gunfights or trying to find the pick even at 2v1s, and it just doesn't work. And so the s &D is like a real problem right now, and I, I it's those are things that are kind of difficult to fix generally, unless you just go into each match like, yo, we're huddling up, we're playing together, Every opportunity we have a chance to put together, we have to do it. Like those things can be semi tough to fix. So we'll see if they can do it, but that's a big time problem heading into the next few days here for Optic. I mean, it's good seeing Skump dominate. He's in champs form. He looks great. I mean, they won a Moscow against Florida where Formal had nine kills. He went nine and nine and they almost a hundred point club Florida, 250 to 102 and Formal was literally nine and nine. That's crazy. And Dashy had some impressive plays. Envoy went off on Apocalypse and Formal made some nice plays. I mean, Skump made some nice plays. Overall, they look really, really good in the respawns. I think now they came out cold against the subliners, but they got to figure out these search and destroy. So last team here, as for Florida, man, it's tough, bro. They're eliminated, obviously, from the loser's bracket. They lose 3-1 to Optic. They had the really nice S&D on standoff where, you, where they had a lot of really great plays. 
the SMGs continues to be the theme where it feels like they get isolated from from their SMGs from the ARs and they just don't find those they're not maximizing the ARs lines of sights a lot of these times where the SMGs aren't as aware of the ARs positioning as they should be and they're over peaking and over channeling and the ARs aren't able to effectively trade the kills and the SMGs had some real problems especially on APOC where it just felt like they were getting, they were really disconnected from the rest of their team. They're a little isolated. And so Neptune and Havoc had some real problems on APOC and their control is absolutely awful. They, they've they lost six of their last seven uh, controls with their only win coming against LAG. So it's a bad sign. They had, they had, they had a awakening using the 74U off the break on Checkmate, which I thought was a fun time on defense, but yeah, that team just has a lot of problems. I think we're going to see some big time roster changes with these guys for sure. I'd be surprised if 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 three of them stayed together, I'd be very surprised. I think only at max two of them would stay together. Maybe I think Awakening and Neptune are most likely to stay together. We'll see about Skies. I think Skies is going to have some pretty nice offers from other teams in this offseason. But we'll see what happens there. Havoc's interesting as well, but I, I don't know if I see him returning either. So we'll have to see, but um, we'll talk a lot about Florida. Obviously, they had a lot of issues there, and those roster moves are going to be juicy heading here to the end of Champs and into next week in the following few weeks into Roster Mania. So this week's going to be crazy, man. I think the big takeaway is that Dallas is a legit contender to win this tournament. Subliners have to be considered as a contender now they i think they very likely will finish top four for sure they look like they have that potential too and they're in a pretty good spot too now the big time question then is what happens with with optic in the losers bracket what happens with the rocker in the losers bracket and how do these two teams play the next in in against the losers from the winner semis so it's going to be a wild weekend at this point I have a lot of faith in, in the Empire to make some moves, but Ultra, it's hard to pick them against the Ultra. So I'm excited to see what happens tomorrow. I'm not gonna make a prediction. I'm just going to react to what happens, provide you guys with the opportunity to make the predictions and, and hang out with me tomorrow in the watch parties because I'll be doing a watch party tomorrow during the matches. And uh, there we go. This has been the, this was the first uh, zero cut breakdown video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, drop a comment down below. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Who's your favorite now heading into this weekend? I uh, Spoilers, I would say. FaZe is my favorite. Still Toronto 2, Dallas 3, New York 4, Optic 5, uh, Rocker 6. We'll have to see, boys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And like, comment, subscribe. Share the video if you guys really enjoyed it. As always, guys, I'm your boy, Sylvester Lee. And guys, we will see you next time. I'm out.